We see tremendous resources, activists from a multitude of different organizations from Canada, the United States, and Mexico. And in this room, in addition to these resources, we know we have the tellers of truth. Just a few weeks ago was the 20th anniversary of the negotiations around the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement, and there was an orgy of self-congratulations from the business press, electronic media, with a constant, ongoing refrain that prosperity has, is, uh, that the NAFTA and the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement has, has brought unprecedented prosperity to, to working families across North America. Now, we, as the tellers of truth, know that that is simply not the truth. As a new member of Parliament three years ago, I uh, started my work as a member of the International Trade Committee and uh, was, uh, as a member, a representative of the New Democratic Party, uh, present at the Trade Committee hearings and Trade Committee meetings where there were many representatives from the business community coming forward to say, Again, uh, that uh, monotone, that monoculture of the one idea that NAFTA has brought unprecedented prosperity to North American families. And I, in my naivety as a parliamentarian, asked the question, well, what is the proof of that? And business community would say, well, real income has gone up. So I asked what I thought was a simple question. Is it the same for all income strata? Is it the same for the wealthy as it is for the poor? And the business representatives would look down at their notes and they would say, well, uh, I'm sure it is. Uh, you'll have to ask Statistics Canada. So I went to Statistics Canada. That is the national organization that compiles all of the census data and all of the minutia about every facet of Canadian life. And I asked them, has real income grown for all levels of Can the Canadian population? And their answer quite stunned me. They said, well, we don't actually publish those figures. We just publish the overall compilations. Thus began a one-year battle to get the information from StatsCan as to what was actually happening with income levels. And it would be no surprise to the truth tellers in this room, we finally last year got the first StatsCan data released, and this year, just a few weeks ago, released the updated versions. And this is what has happened to Canadian incomes under NAFTA and the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement. Since 1989, since the implementation of the Canada-US Free Trade Agreement, the wealthiest in Canada have seen their income skyrocket, 20%. If you're a corporate lawyer, if you're a corporate CEO, you're doing better than ever. So the wealthiest 20% have seen their income skyrocket. The upper middle class has seen no change. What's interesting from the StatsCan figures that we had to fight to release is what has actually happened to most Canadian families. The middle class has seen their income lower. In real terms, they're doing worse off than they were in 1989. They've lost about a week's income on average right across the middle class. Now, this comes at a time when overtime hours have gone up over a third. So what we're seeing is middle class families working longer and longer hours, working harder and harder, and actually earning less now than they were back in 1989. For the working class or the lower middle class, the impact has been even stronger. They've lost about two weeks of income, on average, right across the working class. That's 20% of the population, six million Canadians. And for the poorest of Canadians, no secret to any of us in this room, the impacts have been catastrophic. The, 20th, the poorest 20% of the Canadian population have actually seen uh, their incomes gutted. They've lost a month and a half of income on average over that period, from 1989 to, to today. What that means is they are working harder and harder, but over a 12-month period, it's, it's as if they're getting no paycheck at all for a month and a half, every single year. Now that catastrophic impact, I think, is interesting to note because in Canada we are seeing a homelessness crisis of epic proportions that we have not seen since the Great Depression. 300,000 Canadians will be sleeping out in the parks and main streets of our country this very night. So what we see as truth tellers is that this myth of unprecedented prosperity for Canadian families simply does not hold water. We've seen similar results in the United States and Mexico. 
in Foreign Affairs magazine this summer. There was an interesting article by Kenneth Sheeve and Matthew Slaughter, two professors, one from Yale, one from Dartmouth, who've been strong supporters of corporate globalization. And uh, in one case, Mr. Slaughter, it was actually uh, one of the, uh, I guess it's a bit of an oxymoron, but an economic advisor to President Bush. <laughs> what they said in the article this summer is that for 96% of American income earners, their real income fell between 2001 and 2005. Again, if you're a corporate CEO or corporate lawyer, you're doing better than ever before. But most middle class and working families have seen their incomes fall. And for these two proponents of corporate globalization, they're saying this undermines the whole corporate agenda that we have put into place. They're very right. Again, as tellers of truth, we understand that things need to change in North America. In Mexico, we have seen this catastrophic gutting of the rural population, the agricultural industries. So right across North America, we have seen that far from the unprecedented prosperity that the business class would have us believe, we are actually seeing working families in all three countries working longer and longer hours, harder and harder, and having less and less in their wallet. And that is why we've seen debt loads in Canada, for example, nearly double over this same period. The average Canadian family has seen their debt load double over that same time period. So the snake oil salesman that sold us this, saying we would have prosperity and who continue to try to sell the myth of unprecedented prosperity, have a solution to this erosion of income. They say, let's take more of the same medicine. Let's have the Security and Prosperity Partnership that we know, and I know this conference will be delving into more detail in that tomorrow, but we know that reducing regulatory standards in over 300 areas, far from increasing the prosperity for ordinary working families in North America, will do exactly the opposite. So that is why this conference is so important, because what you will be doing today and tomorrow, and I wish I could be here, is sharing the resources, the phenomenal resources that are in this room, and building on that foundation of a fair trade agenda, a trade with justice agenda for North America. I was happy with a number of the organizations in this room, representatives from the three uh, national legislatures as well, to uh, organize last year in Ottawa the second trinational forum that involves civil society representatives and elected representatives from all three countries. And there, we moved forward the agenda, a fair trade agenda for North America, that it would involve gutting NAFTA, rebuilding it brick by brick, and instead of having investors' rights as the first and foremost principle of NAFTA, having social, environmental, and labor standards as the principal underpinning for a North America that has a fair trade agenda rather than a free trade agenda. So on behalf of the Parliament of Canada, I would like to thank all of the activists here for the work that you've been doing in your communities and in your organizations. I would like to thank you for the work you're going to be doing over the next couple of days. I'll be looking forward with great interest to the minutes and the results of this particular conference. And I would like to thank you for your ongoing work as a teller of truth so we can get beyond the myths of NAFTA and build the North America that we all want to see. Thank you very much.